Before I start, I just want to throw it out to everybody, and even you, Mike, as well. Um, if you take out your iPhone right now, guess how many apps do you think you have on your iPhone? Oh, gosh, probably right. about 50, I'd say. Right, so the first time I did this exercise, I went through and I said, I probably have 50 applications. Yeah. I was blown away. The first time I went through, I had six screens. There's 25 apps on each screen. I was at 150 applications. And that was when it clicked. It was my aha moment. So right now they're saying that there's going to be 287 billion apps in the ecosystem by 2017. That's a mind, mind-boggling number. And it's really exciting because today, for the first time in the history of the world, there's actually more customers interacting with our mobile applications than on web. And this is a question that I really throw out to our customers out there, and I say, you know, how are you servicing and connecting these mobile users? Because maybe it's a, it's a different way to do it than in the past. Some of the traditional customer service channels might not be the best way to engage your mobile first users. Um, and this is where, you know, SOS, enter SOS is, is what I like to say. And so this is the new product that we're launching, uh, Safe Harbor Summer 15. We're really, really excited about it. Before I kind of go into the line items, the features and the value props, I want to kind of just introduce uh, kind, of, kind of the value prop. Um, so, uh, we, we like to say that we're democratizing the Amazon May Day experience. When you mm -hmm. say, like, you know, what analogous products out there, Amazon is current kind of like leading the way in terms of this customer service support channel. Uh, but we're opening up to all mobile platforms, not just specific to, to Amazon, which is really exciting. And our goal is to kind of create this one on one, highly personalized connection. You know, the, you know, the, yesteryear, back in the day when you'd have these bricks and mortar experiences, you'd go into your financial advisor and you meet with them face to face and you'd mm -hmm. have these interactions. But right now, we want to take that type of interaction, we want to transfer it to a mobile first world and SOS is really, really great at that. Um, we also want to be able to diagnose and solve issues very, very quickly and Amazon is kind of blazing uh, the path in that perspective. Amazon can get an uh, agent connected to a customer in under 10 seconds. So there's no long IVR system. It's raising customers' expectations. Yeah. They're not willing to stand in a queue for four to five minutes to get serviced. Um, and the last thing we talk about, you know, people say that content is king, but really, we really think context is king. So from an SOS perspective, we want to be able to share context of the customer back to the agent so they can be able to address and troubleshoot issues very quickly. So things like authentication, what page they're on, what error message they're seeing, um, it really helps to, to speed up the, the interaction with the, with the customer. So with that being said, I've kind of broken up into three different parts. So the SOS component, um, it's actually native inside Service Cloud, so it's a native uh, cust uh, console component you see here on, on the bottom right. So it's built on the Salesforce uh, platform. Um, it's part of the MSA, which is really great in terms of uh, friction with uh, the selling process. What you get with that widget is you get screen sharing and annotation. So it's basically like the agent is able to look over the customer's shoulder mm -hmm. in real time and help them guide them through complex or multi-stage um, interactions. Uh, we do support all devices. So we do support you know, tablets, smartphones, both on iOS and on Android, um, which is really exciting. Uh, in terms of agent experience, there's a, there's a toolbar for all the session UI, so muting, disabling video, uh, ending the session. All of those uh, session controls are there. Um, and then from a multi-monitor support, we allow the agent to continue to, to work the way that they, they know and, and like to do the best. So we, we support multi-monitor where you can actually break the console component out and put it uh, on two views. Next, now I kind of switch to the, the customer side. Um, like I mentioned before, you kind of you drop our native SDK into any iOS or Android application, you get all these amazing features um, for free. So one of the benefits of using an SDK is it's fully white label, it's fully customizable. So when you see SOS in the wild, my development team, we can't even tell that it's SOS because you can customize the, 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 the text, you can customize the color, the UI interactions. Everything is white labelable, so you can keep with your brand consistency and not break them out into these um, other branded situations, which is really cool. In terms of some of the out-of-the-box functionality that you get, um, you get video chat. So right now it's one-way video streaming from the agent to the customer. Like I mentioned before, there's screen sharing annotations. Um, and then, then from a PII or PCI compliance standpoint, we also support field masking. Um, so you can actually mask certain field inputs, mm -hmm. so credit card information, social security numbers, Very useful. Um, those types of things. So for financial services and insurance, yeah. this is a must have. Um, and that's something we support right out of the box, which is really exciting. And then lastly, this idea about sending custom data. So as an app developer, I can actually send you know, an auth ID, a you, you mm -hmm. did, an email address, you can authenticate that customer inside the service cloud so you have more context about who, who you're interacting with. 
Cool. And then from a service cloud integration perspective, um, you benefit from the Salesforce platform, like I mentioned before, and the data model is very similar. So it is a BPO. Um, Kendra had mentioned that when you uh, accept something from the Omnichannel, an object uh, pops, and so from this perspective, it's the session object. We like to think of it as a static transcript, so who's in the session, how long they was in the session, what was their wait time. It's basically a snapshot of what happened. Um, but along with that, we also support session recording, which we, we basically weave together the audio, the video, the screen share, and we compile it up in an MP4 file, and then we actually append that file name to the uh, SOS session object, so for audit compliant reasons, you can actually play back that experience with a customer. Um, it could be used for quality assurance and training as well to, Absolutely. to help train your agents. Um, and then session activities, so there's a timeline of what's happening, who's joining the session, when do they leave the session, did session recording start, these types of things, um, which is really important. Um, and lastly, the, this idea of an agent availability IP, API, so when we've done customer development calls, usually customers are asking us, you know, I don't want to expose the SOS OS button if agents aren't online, because that's not a great experience, right? You're waiting in the queue, you're like, what's going on? So we've actually exposed an API that they can query and say, if agents are online, should I hide or show the SOS button? So it's a really easy way to say, if no agents are online, let's not, hi let's not show the SOS button, let's mm -hmm. drive them to a self-service option, like a community or even a chat if that's available, um, which is really, really exciting. So with that, I am going to uh, spin up a quick and dirty demo for you guys out there. So you should now see two screens. You should, you should see an agent logged on the Service Cloud console, and then on the other side, you should see my iPhone being mirrored to your screen um, as the customer. So as the customer, I'm now logged into the Salesforce web app. Um, and I didn't actually get to make the last Dreamforce, so I was a little bit upset because I heard Bruno Mars was playing. So this year I want to make sure that I'm at Dreamforce. So uh, I'm on the web app, but I can't really find how to register for Dreamforce. So I decide, you know what, instead of being really frustrated and sending out an angry tweet, that I might actually start an SOS session, have an agent walk me through how to register uh, for Dreamforce. So I'm simply going to tap this SOS button here in the bottom right. I get a little bit of an onboarding message, so you can go through that micro onboarding experience. So tell your customer what you're about to expect, have them agree to the terms of service. Um, you can customize this experience however you would like. Um, but before I press connect, I'm actually going to go back to the agent console, um, and I'm actually going to go online to be able to accept SOS sessions. Uh, this is the omni-channel um, that, that Kendra was talking about earlier, where we basically push any types of custom uh, or service cloud objects to the best available agent based on capacity and, and their skill set. So now I'm online and I'm able to accept uh, SOS sessions. So I'm going to press connect. We run a network connectivity test to make sure that you're in a uh, optimize network experience, so you have an amazing uh, SOS experience. Now you see the requests pop into the omni-channel queue. You get a little bit of metadata about the, the customer, so their name, what device they're using, uh, their OS. Um, then the agent can actually press accept. You'll notice that the SOS widget maximizes on the request acceptance. Um, in the background, you see that the SOS session object actually popped as well. And this is what Kendra was talking about. You can actually pop um, any object associated uh, with, with the request. So now you can see that in the shared web experience, where basically the agent is looking over the customer's shoulder in real time and able to guide them through complex or, or multi-stage interactions. So for this interaction as the agent, I know that the Dreamforce uh, registration is actually at the very bottom. So I'm going to just verbally say, Customer, let's actually scroll down to the very bottom, just like this. And you can see that everything updates in real time. Um, and actually, we're going to want you to click on the Events tab down here. Simply tap on that. And then I think, obviously, Dreamforce is the one that uh, we'll want. So you'll actually tap on Dreamforce. And that'll take me to the Dreamforce page. And I should have known that it was actually under Events in Dreamforce. Um, it, it's so so easy and so um, obvious now that I think about it. But now as the agent, I'm, I've got this personal one-to-one -one connection. So the customer can see me, but I can't see the customer. And now we're able to be in the synced experience. So both the customer and agent can move the agent video around the screen. It's much like a FaceTime experience that you've used before. So you can actually you know, ricochet the agent container off the wall. There's gravity. There's weight to it. We, so we spend a lot of time kind of optimizing uh, that experience. From a UI perspective, we've actually we have radial UI, so you can customize this if you'd like, but default out of the box, we give you 
all this functionality for free. So you're able to mute, disable the video, end the session, or even uh, enable two-way video um, if you like. So now that I'm about to register, I notice that it, you know, it's in the top right. So as the agent, I'm actually going to reposition uh, the agent container. You'll notice we see this foreshadowing of corners. So um, we actually have hot corners is what we call it. So most app developers put the important information in the middle of the application. So we want to push that agent video container to the side. So it kind of has stickiness back to the hot corner. So now I've moved it out of the way and I can have the uh, customer go and press the register now button. So I'm going to tap on the register now and we're going to go through the registration process. Um, but before I, s I continue, I'm going to make sure that you know, I've got that time open in my calendar. So I'm actually going to go out of the application as the customer. You'll notice that we're able to um, background the app and send a visual cue back to the agent. What we've actually done there is we've disabled the, uh, disabled the, the video, the screen sharing, but we've kept audio going. So you're able to continue to communicate with the agent, but you're able to go into other apps, go into your operating system within your mobile phone to either pull more information so for this example, you know, I can go into my calendar app very easily and I can say, you know, okay, June's coming up um, to make sure that I'm actually available for that time. And it looks like I actually am, so there's no issues there. I can go back into the demo app and say, this is great. I'm actually going to be an attendee um, this year um, and I'm going to click on that. Perfect. And now that you know, I think I can do this on my own, I don't really need the agent's help to, to do anything else, I can say, you know, you've caught me right at my greatest pain point. So as the customer, right when I was about to abandon and become a disloyal customer, we were able to connect with that customer via SOS, help them through that complex, multi-stage transaction and interaction. We we're able to help them through it. Now that we want to release them back into the wild, it's as simple as you know, tapping on the end session button releases that customer um, back into the wild. For this example, we actually have a survey page that pops up so you can capture metrics around CSAT or MPS scores to see how, um, see how great that video call was. So here I'd probably give that a five out of the five. I think the agent was pretty, pretty good on this one and I'll submit that. And then you'll notice that I'm back in my native app experience. So it was very seamless. You know, we like to think of support as a, or support or service as a layer. Um, we see a lot of customers, they sometimes think about support as, as a destination. So you go to this help portal, you go to this help site to get help, but it takes you out of the context of where you're actually encountering the, the issue. So SOS is all about servicing uh, customers when and where they need it in context. Um, so now the customer can continue on with their day, um, but just because the customer's gone, that doesn't mean the agent's um, agent's role is, is over. Uh, we actually now can go back to our, our session object here. We can see that if I refresh this page quickly, it's basically like a static transcript of, of what just occurred. So we can see that you know, who was in the session, how long the session was, um, the average wait time, but then there's also metadata about like the customer's IP address or what version of the app or OS uh, the customer was using. Um, so this is a snapshot, but we're also able to um, give a full session recording. And this is where the session URL um, would actually uh, show up here, and this is basically weaving together the audio, the video, the screen sharing, the agent annotations into one MP4 file, uh, where then for audit and comp compliance or even training or QA purposes, you can actually replay this session um, in real time to, to, to make sure you have all interactions with that customer um, recorded. So yeah, that's basically uh, at a high level uh, the experience of SOS, and uh, with that, I guess we'll pass it on to, to Peter. I, I, there's been a lot of times where I personally, as a, a user of an app, have would have loved to have that capability to just show someone exactly what I'm seeing because trying to explain over the phone, you know, here's the error message, you know, yeah, here's what I'm definitely. seeing, and that's a painful process. Yeah, and part of the hypotheses that we're seeing is that because agents don't have to ask, what are you seeing? Do you see this? That's what's cutting down the yeah. average handle time. Mm -hmm. So that context, you know, could be customer authentication, but actually sharing the screen is context, it's gold. Um, so quickly, just running through what you guys can expect Safe Harbor in the winter 15 release. Um, so the iOS. OS SDK is going live um, in summer 15. Android will be one release later. Um, 
so stay tuned for that. We'll also be delivering two-way facing camera, which is really exciting. Very so that opens up a lot of cool use case cases around health and life sciences, um, field services, so forward-facing cameras streaming back exactly what you're seeing in real time, back to an expert back in headquarters, really? some really, really cool stuff. Um, we're also going to work on the agent experience some, so being able to put the customer and agent on hold. So if you do need to swarm on the issue, you want to be able to put the customer on hold, get help from an expert, and then continue to engage with the customer. And lastly, you know, seeing um, Clement uh, with his macros and his shortcut keys, we want to align with that strategy and we want to use macros and not clicks. Um, so we're going to be consistent with that thinking and be able to control um, the entire SOS experience from an agent just using shortcut keys. Wow. That's what's coming in, uh, yeah, winter 15. There is a lot to look forward to for our customers. And I just have to imagine with something so new, Twitter just has to be blowing up right now. I mean, we, we don't have time for every single question, but I don't know if we can just distill this until one, maybe two questions on the, on the biggest ask from the customers. All Ooh. right. Sounds good, Mike. Yeah, I'll, I'll just throw one at you. So Anthony has a great question. He's asking, how does S the SOS object query the customer to identify them for Omni? Great question. Um, so we actually allow you to pass any custom data back to the Service Cloud Console look over here. Um, and so for this example what you saw here today, we actually passed back a customer email and then we wrote a trigger that when we accepted that SOS request, we queried the contact object to then to append that contact to the case or the session object um, that, that gets popped. So it can be an email address, it can be an auth ID, it can be a user ID, anything that you want to authenticate a customer with that's um, specific to a, a single contact record, mm -hmm. you can pass back and, uh, and authenticate. Mm -hmm.